I, I really wanted to start to be a mortician and to do this job to serve and help my community. You know, I live in Baltimore. I've seen and experienced a lot of death. I see a lot of young people die around me all the time. So I really wanted to be able to do something to help these families in a time of need. And which if that's a big part of the reason I went to mortuary school and I started attending the college I did. Well, the definition of restorative arts itself is to create, nat restore natural form. So the point of us doing the wax head project is to learn how to actually take mortuary wax and reconstruct faces um, that may need it. In the event that there's been an accident or decomposition or anything that just may be affecting the way that a body would typically look, we're able to correct some of those things with restorative arts. And the Wax Head Project sort of teaches us how to take a skull and build an entire face around it. So one of the first things I noticed on, and when I started Mortuary Science School was the curriculum is very much so based, is really geared at Caucasian. Um, and although there is mention of other races, it's really not as inclusive as it could be. And at my mortuary school in particular, we only did Caucasian heads. Um, I do think there are some schools that take a little bit more time and they change the color of the wax with different cosmetics and they have a little bit more freedom. But we didn't have the opportunity to do those things. And unfortunately, I think a lot of other mortuary science programs are like that too. So when the problem with that is when we get out into the real world, we're not really set up to care for all the families that we're meant to be serving. When you think of reconstructing a face and the muscles, when you're looking at your loved one in a casket, you know, to me, if I misshape the nose a little bit and the bridge is a little too wide or the nostrils aren't quite right, to me, that might not be a huge deal, right? Because I've never seen your loved one before, but to you, that's going to make the world of difference. And that is where the detail aspect of this comes into play. And it's extremely hard, as you said, to mimic those facial muscles and the skin tones and the features. It's not quite so bad sometimes if you're restructuring just a little bit or a little piece of someone. But when you're doing these restorative arts head projects, you're taking a skull and you're completely building a face. And it, it needs to look like a human. Um, so as you can imagine, it's quite, quite difficult. So unfortunately, the students that are taking classes now are using the same outdated material that I was using. And truthfully, I think that the material itself is the huge source of the problem. A lot of my professors did as much as they could to help us and they really tried to fill in between the lines and they tried to provide information that these textbooks didn't provide. But at the end of the day, the mortuary science professors are there to teach us how to pass the national board exam and get our licenses. So while they are doing as much as they can to change, you know, give us the information, they still have to be able to teach us what we need to know to pass these exams. And the exams have these questions, these same outdated. It, it'd be much easier if people start rolling with the punches and implementing these changes because we're not going to stop making a roar and making a ruckus. You know, these changes will happen. It's just a matter of when. We're going to keep working at it. You know, we're not going anywhere and we're certainly trying our best. You know, there's not a mortuary student that I've ever met that doesn't want to serve their community to the best of their ability. So we're just going to keep on trying and we're going to keep on going until we make these things happen. Mm -hmm.